We are preparing to butcher out and piece out some of this beef. Well, actually, all of the beef. This is from our one beef cow. It's an Angus. We still have yet to process or butcher our other beef cow, but we need to put this stuff in our freezer. And so now we are preparing and trying to get ready for that because this is a lot of beef. And then maybe today we could get up on this fence line because it's calling my name. It's not gonna get done, you know? When you process a larger animal, you know, these are not chickens. You know, this is probably the biggest animal we're gonna ever butcher. But you need a uh, table space. We use these plastic tables for processing our chickens. I don't think that's gonna cut it though. <laughs> you know, this is such a big beast. Um, those plastic tables are not gonna cut it for the beef. And I don't think they cut it for pigs also. Get it, cut it. If you absolutely had to, I guess this is an old door from one of my doors here. Uh, I could always put maybe some butcher paper on that, maybe plastic, and we could use this. This is pretty beefy, which is some sawhorses. This is food, so I wouldn't necessarily cut right onto this wood. I built this table. This table is made out of redwood. You know what I noticed about moving on the East Coast is that there's not readily redwood available. In California, this stuff was just at Home Depot. <laughs> but I built this one 10 years ago, and we used this to piece out our pigs last year, which is super heavy duty. Uh, I think we need something like an actual butcher block table. This is a hardwood butcher block that I need to finish. So we need to put some oil on this just to kind of seal it a little bit because we are going to be cutting on this table. And this is just going to be our, um, you know, our butcher table. If you're working with uh, oils, any kind of oils, even if they're natural oils, I suggest wearing a, some kind of apron or a clothes that you don't care to get ruined because any little splash of any kind of oil is just going to ruin your clothes. Because right now this is just straight raw wood. It's not sealed or anything. I'm going to use a tongue oil to seal up this butcher block and then once it's cured and once it's dry, then it's food safe. You could use it as is because it's natural, which is fine. But I think just to make it last, you know, make it look nice, um, seal it with something. You can also use butcher block oil for this. I'm just letting it soak in there and then just kind of really quick wipe. If this turns out well, I'm going to build maybe a few of these because eventually we're going to start doing more um, workshops for larger animals. Instead of just chickens, we're going to do pig workshops and, and beef workshops. So having something like this to cut on for everyone, it just definitely helps. This wood really soaks up this oil. So I might end up doing probably a few coats. Also with the plastic tables, uh, the meat slides on the plastic table. You don't want that because it can slide right off onto the floor. So with the wood table, it's less likely to slide. So it's just a little bit more sturdy. After a couple coats, we're going to let that dry. So that way we can let it cure and use it when we piece out our beef. It looks like we have a little bit of time here before it gets dark and before dinner time. I do like this blade. Uh, it's just so helpful. I mean, I've, I haven't tried the chainsaw blade, which is instead of it being like a table saw, there's like little chainsaw blades on it uh, because I, have, I don't have one. So I've been meaning to get one so I can maybe do a side by side comparison, but I really like this one. I mean, the guy who sold me on this one because he was just like, well, it's really a pr preference chainsaw blade versus this one. But I, I want to see for myself, but, but this has been working. If you've been following my clearing the fence line video series, I've done over 200 feet so far. And I'm doing this all with just kind of just hand tools as we try to reestablish this old horse fence 
so that way I could energize it and this will definitely help us next year if I can get it done. Hey beefy boy, it's just me. What I'm learning as I'm clearing in the woods here is the best time to do this is right now. It's not in the spring, it's not in the summer. Winter time, fall time is the best time to clear out some areas. Because in this area, this is the Amazon forest of North Carolina. It's, it's hard to, uh, this is not really the fence line, but <laughs> You know, it's so interesting to see it when when there's no leaves because you can really see in here now. You know, you can see, I can see the property line. There's like a little fence right there, old fence. This right here, right here is where all that water was coming in at. And when it rained really bad, it just like kind of flooded all in here. I'm still gonna manage to get out here, even just for an hour a day. Just chipping away and just clearing what I can. So here is the property line. You see the old fence line right here? T old T-post, it just keeps on going that way. I mean, it's not that much big trees over here. It's just kind of very overgrown. You know, it's just a little hard to get in there, even with this little thing I have. But something I could bulldoze something. If I took a, some kind of, I don't know what, a skid steer or something and just, and just made a path. I think that would help because eventually this right here is actually a, uh, an old logging road and you get to see, you'll see it as we go inside there. It's just so interesting that you know I just I could just come in here and get lost in these woods and, and just like look around you know. Sometimes you see old like little trash piles <laughs> but <laughs> I mean to imagine that we have this in our backyard, it's so nuts to even think about, but it's neat. Uh, so it's just a lot. Of, it's just a lot of work, you know. But I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to clear a fence line, so sometimes I get sidetracked. Not a peep from this guy. I probably heard him moo maybe five times. If this was the big brother, the one we just butchered. He'd be mooing at me constantly. I think, whoa. I think we're about there, guys. Close to the end here. But uh, I did a little bit. We got it, we got in there, I made a little path in there. And I cleared off this area. I need to, um, I'll probably end up taking the mower and hitting this low parts. Cause it's really nothing. These ones that are hanging over, we just need to clear them out. That one keep going. Actually, this is probably the end of it right here where it's the worst part. These privet trees are the worst area. But as you get up higher, even those uh, pines, small pines, cedars, those are not that bad uh, as we get up higher. So yeah, this is the worst of it. Uh-oh. The pigs heard me. They heard me. Forget it, it's over now. Hey, pigs. Ooh. Ooh. We're gonna move these guys out tomorrow. 
I'm coming. Actually, I've always raised two at a time and then soaking their feed. It's, it's basically kind of fermenting it and it's get, it, their feed gets, it expands. I would say this is the limit though on if you're gonna be soaking feed. Otherwise, I probably should just get like a, a automatic feeder, you know, and just fill it up and just let them have free choice. We just picked up the last of, I thought we were done, but we picked up our last feed order of the year. All year long tractor supply has helped me out. They let me deliver my feed at their store so that way they can load it up onto my trailer. Otherwise, I would not be able to order these totes. And this saves me a ton of money. I've called all the local feed stores in my area and they all told me no. My, my gate doesn't come off either. It's totally welded shut on there. These are extenders on the forklift so that way you can push it a little bit forward. Cool man. Thanks. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is our third feed order from New Country Organics this year. And the best way that we found of how we're going to do this, unload this, again, I feel like I say this in every video, but we have no tractor. <laughs> this is in case if some of you guys are new here. And uh, the best way we found is just to back it up in our barn. The thing that helps us is the concrete and our pallet jack. We got a thousand pounds of pig feed and a thousand pounds of layer feed. Okay. <laughs> it's not ideal how they packaged it here where they put them on top of each other. Uh, you know, I probably should have seen if they would package it differently, you know, like a thousand pounds and a thousand pounds like next to each other like I thought they were. For those of you following at home, it takes three minutes to fill up one of these 55 gallon barrels. The egg layer feed's gone and now this is the pig feed. Now this feeds for our three feeder pigs That's it. Thousand pounds of pig feed, thousand pounds of egg layer feed, and this should last us at least three months. Maybe a little over three months. I'm thinking we're gonna end up buying another thousand pound tote in a few months. And that should be it for these guys until we get another batch of pigs, which I'm, we probably will. And then maybe we'll put those guys in the woods and we might be having a workshop with these guys so stay tuned for that the electrical wire plus the hog panel it's like double protection because <laughs> i don't trust any pig hey pigs hey pigs hey pigs can i pet you can i pet you let me pet you no no that's all right that's all right no oh. that is not good y'all look at that it's busted. It's all cracked. Shooting out that way. And this is, I just bought this in the summer. There's a hole in it. It's a crack. I'm going to start my own general store. So that way I don't have to go into town. Just buy everything in bulk. And uh, just have a stock of everything. What do you think? Huh, it might be fun. How many chickens are in here? 
chickens and a couple of packages of legs. So I'm not sure <laughs> how many legs. We got legs and leg quarters, so just a bunch of meat. Yeah, these are probably some of the smallest chickens that we raise. There's two right there. All right, I'm thinking the next video you guys see is we're gonna piece out this beef. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I don't know how long it's gonna take us. It might take us a few days, but maybe not. Maybe I'm hoping it'll take us one day to, to piece out everything. Uh, and also guys, I wanna tell you about an event I'm gonna be at uh, next month. It's, all, it's about a month away. I'm gonna be in Texas, Dallas, Texas, which is last time we were in Texas, we were driving through to move here to North Carolina. And you know, that was seven years ago now. So I'm gonna be at a pastured poultry conference. I'll leave that link down below so you can check that out. Also, I got you guys a discount code for that conference if you wanna go. Joel Salatin's gonna be there, Daniel Salatin's gonna be there. Uh, it's like a three day, three day, yeah. Three day event, I'm speaking on Saturday on starting a homestead with pastured poultry and also tell, telling our, talking about our story of moving from the city to the mountains of North Carolina and starting this homestead. So it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Other people are gonna be there. Other local farmers talking about, you know, marketing side of pasture poultry and, um, you know, how to make money selling pasture poultry. And uh, yeah, just, just all those things. So it's specific to pasture poultry, right? Uh, not just chickens, but ducks. Uh, geese turkeys um but it should be fun so hope to see some of you guys there so leave a comment down below if you guys live in texas and how is the weather in january in texas i hear it's really cold but i don't, I don't know maybe it's colder than here i don't know but leave a comment down below thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one a simple meal today what do we got we've got the shredded chicken from the oven roaster it's like super tender and super juicy and i added some barbecue sauce because we are going to be making kind of like a sloppy joe kind of and then we've got some beans left over from another meal and then we've got we've got salad or spinach that we can pile it up on top it's gonna be really good